Big data has, I think, taken over everybody's imagination. And you are an integral part of that, focusing on marketing and advertising, because everybody who is trying to reach out to the audience like me and everybody here is focused on ROI. What I wanted to start first with you is understanding the scope is, is beyond, I think, many people's imagination. So why don't we take at that level and then come down to you know, where we talk about what the dollar for the maximum amount. Sure, so big data certainly is uh, a very hot uh, buzzword uh, today. I mean, earlier in our panel, we just heard that 90% uh, of all the information uh, that's ever been created was created in the last two years. 90% uh, of all the pictures that have been taken have been taken in the last uh, year. And so clearly we're seeing a big explosion of, of data. Now, uh, from a perspective of marketing and advertising, if a company can truly exploit the latent value in this data and uh, drive really high impact from their advertising bu budgets, they can truly create uh, deep competitive advantages for themselves. And that's why this is such a hot area, at least from a media and advertising focus, because the entire industry is being dis disrupted uh, based on big data and programmatic buying uh, trends. When you look at the ROI for, for many of your clients you are building up, uh, the question again people ask is, you know, is there real value for me? I think it's measurable. That's uh, the real question. Uh, so when you uh, hear about big data, you know, the first thing you see is it's big, right? And so people talk about all these uh, needs that are associated with it. They talk about volume, they talk about variety, they talk about velocity and veracity and so on and so forth. But, but uh, the real important we there is, is uh, the, you know, the value that you get out of uh, the big data. And uh, uh, being able to extract that uh, is, is the art and the science to it. And uh, historically, you know, if you uh, take historical techniques and approaches uh, that have worked in, uh, say, 10 years ago, in a different context, in a different environment, and you apply them in this new world of big data, you're going to struggle uh, to extract that value. And so you need to keep up with the times and, uh, you know, get into the newer ways and newer technologies and newer sciences, uh, algorithms and so on. Uh, that uh, can be put to play to extract maximum value and does deliver ROI. We see this over and over again uh, in our business uh, because we can deliver, and I gave some examples in our panel, uh, where we've had advertisers, for example, Birdseye, that uh, you know put in a dollar in rocket fuel and they got $3.62 of incremental revenue for every dollar they put in, and that's because we were able to extract value uh, from the data and, and bring to bear lots of smart algorithms uh, to accomplish that. You know, uh, the other challenge uh, with the new economy and the new technology is, if you go back a couple of decades, as you mentioned, the demographic was different. They were the parents. Now you're targeting the, the tweens and the teens and, and the young professionals. So the, the challenge to attract them is, I think, very different compared to a couple of decades. So if you take your theory forward, going back, you know, a decade or two, the audience has changed and the way they think and behave and buy the purchasing habits are very different. Very, very true. And uh, so that makes it all the more important uh, to make sure that uh, you reach them in the channels of their choice. So, you know, while it may be okay to maybe use TV uh, to go after a demographic that's say 55 to you know 64 years old, uh, it, may be, it may not work uh, to reach a younger uh, audience and so you may have to get to them on mobile devices or on their iPads and, and figure this out dynamically in some sense you know, as you're uh, running your media and, uh, and, and also the messaging is a key important uh, differentiator here is the types of messages that this audience uh, may resonate with uh, would be very different uh, from, from others. You are the better person to ask this. Uh, people say it's about 4% or less rate of penetration. Uh, doesn't that become a huge challenge for people working in, in your industry? That's a good point. So my, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the number of companies who are effectively using big data. So I, I see that as an opportunity, frankly. And, uh, and, and you know, the folks out there who are just at the early stages of their career or thinking about different fields to, to enter, uh, there's been some research uh, uh, by a reputable firm uh, that said that the U.S. is going to be short by about two or 3,000, you know, data scientists and big data, uh, you know, skill set driven uh, jobs. Uh, they just don't have the talent for that. It is, a, it is a very hard problem to solve. 
uh, also it is relatively i would say new it's not been around for decades this is something that's really you know kicked on in the last uh, you know five six seven years or so and and uh, large organizations are just trying to get their act together and that's why you come up with like only four percent of these uh, companies are actually uh, leveraging or exploiting uh, you know big data or have practices in production today but there's a lot of interest and lots of folks are trying to figure out uh, how to get this right um, lastly there's a question about career moves career transitions or building your careers in big data not everybody becomes a scientist so people who are looking to move, as we know, the new age, you have to keep changing and keep abreast of technology. So when somebody's trying to move their career, um, what is your advice uh, for people who are not the scientists in big data, but there are a lot of supporting roles that they have to play in different industries? Uh, so are you bringing up really good questions? Uh, so you know, when you think about big data, the first thing that hits you is the technology, right? You need all this sophisticated technology. You need data scientists and so on and so forth. But but that's only part of the solution. If you think of it from an enterprise perspective, I think there's a tremendous amounts of value. Uh, uh, you know, for the folks on the business side who can kind of understand the technology, uh, but also relate that to a business problem. Because, uh, you know, investing in big data, and I have seen many projects where, uh, you know, you may go down that path just because it's big and strategic and you may spend a lot of resources, time and effort and money, but you may not have much to show for what you've done. And, and then, you know, everything needs to be rethought. Uh, and so there's no value, there's no value at the end of the day. You know, that's not a very effective use of time or resources. And, and so, uh, you know, being a business leader who can uh, work with the technical side and, and understand technology uh, to a certain degree and also formulate business problems that the technical folks can then focus on and then communicate the value of what the technical solution is to the business side and to the market also. That's another important constituent. Those communication skills, the people skills, the business skills, uh, I think we have a bigger gap there uh, than just the technology, the people who are comfortable speaking that language. And I think that's a that's then an opportunity for all the folks who are trying to think of a career change or, or a new area to focus on. Uh, you know, this is a very fertile one uh, for, for you to look at. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Sure.